All modern lathes use a machine taper called a Morse taper on both the headstock spindle and the tailstock quill. These are precisely machined to securely hold drive centers, live centers, drill chucks, collets, and more chucking accessories. I'm going to explain the basics of Morse tapers, including how to repair minor damage. Hi y'all, welcome back to my shop. I'm Mike Peace and I'm here to share with you tips, tricks, techniques, and projects to help you become a better wood turner. If this is something you're interested in, please click on the subscribe button and ring the notification bell so you won't miss any future episodes. I want to give this shout out to Gerald Jensen for suggesting this topic on Morse tapers. A machine taper like on this uh, Jacobs Chuck uh, has a pr precise uh, tapered uh, conical shape that fits into a female recess. Uh, I, Wikipedia says that even some uh, total uh, alternative uses of Morse taper, you might say, uh, they're found on some total hip replacements and they're also used in some dental implants. Almost all machine tool spindles and many power tool spindles have a taper as their primary method of attachment for tools. Even on drill presses such as uh, this one here, or handheld drills and certainly lays which have chucks, uh, the chuck is attached by a taper. All modern wood lathes use a Morse taper on their headstock for drives like the, these or even for a pin mandrel. My, my jet, uh, mini jet 1014 uses the same number two Morse taper as my Powermatic. Most lathes use, uh, modern lathes use a uh, Morse taper two. Some of the older ones use a Morse taper one and the one way actually uses a Morse Taper 3 on its uh, tailstock. Most tailstocks use a, a self-extracting mechanism so when you retract it it'll hit a stop and allow this to easily eject. Uh, other things that you, you put on the tailstock besides live centers uh, you could use a uh, Morse Taper drill bit such as this one inch I used for for hollow forms. You always want to make sure you clean it off before you in, insert it in. Make sure you get a clean shaft. Actually, you need to make sure after you retract it, it's sticking out far enough so when you when you put it in with a slight pop, it will seat properly. Okay, how do these things work? Well, they work because the uh, surface is so carefully and precisely machined to match the the, the male cone with the female that it gives you a lot of surface uh, tension once you uh, make sure it's clean and that's why it's so very important to clean these as we discussed in the uh, last tips video. So when you pop that thing in, in place it, it, uh, it has a lot of uh, friction. Sometimes it doesn't hurt to just kind of tap it uh, just a little bit to, to secure it. To re remove it, you need an uh, uh, ejecting bar, and sometimes you have to pop it pretty good because it does seat fairly well, and be careful when you catch it that you're not sending it across the, across the room. Like we talked last week, the importance of cleaning, and if you have compressed air, blow it out occasionally. For light loads, such as those encountered on a lathe where you're turning the work uh, between centers, a drive center and a live center, it holds perfectly well because it can't go anywhere. It's, it's secured. But for some items where the work could uh, poss where you could have lateral pressures and it could work loose if it's not under a, a front load, in those cases you're going to use what's called a draw bar, a threaded rod that will fill that will uh, hold the back of the the item. And a good example of that would be in this this drill chuck where it fits in place. Then you put the draw bar in behind and thread it until it's, it's uh, held securely. Other examples I use a draw bar for is uh, when, I do, when I use this rotary cutter in a, in a collet chuck, Morse taper collet chuck that pops into place. As I adjust the draw bar, it pulls this in, in and holds it very securely. Neither one of neither my drill nor my large uh, Jacobs chuck uh, have a draw bar for the tailstock. You've got to be very careful when you're retracting from drilling, especially turning green wood, that you don't have it embedded and it pulls itself loose. So, be in a position. I always recommend in all my videos when I am drilling, 
I keep my hand on the drill chuck as I'm extracting it so if it starts slipping at all I can reach over here with my left hand and turn the lathe off. I bought this very nice uh, keyless Jacobs chuck actually uh, to go on my uh, drill press but it turns out that the uh, the Morse taper did not match the one that was on my uh, drill press. The drill press had a J3 and this uses a JT33 uh, for the insert on one side and then it has this mantle on the other side that's a Morse taper too. You never use lubricant on on a taper. You could put a cleaning agent in there but you want to make sure it's absolutely clean because you don't want any type of liquid that might interfere with with a good fit. Now if you do wind up with any damage, I don't have any on here, but if you wind up with a small burr, you could remove that carefully, that one spot with a file and then some fine sandpaper. Only deal with that one damaged spot. Don't, don't uh, change the taper accidentally by getting carried away with with uh, uh, sandpaper. I was helping a friend uh, make a tool handle and he uh, always used a chuck for almost everything and when we put the uh, Jacobs chuck uh, and he didn't have a draw bar for his Jacobs chuck but uh, when we put in his Jacobs chuck it just rattled around and I didn't know what the problem was I'd never run into this before um, so when we when we removed it you know I'm I put my finger in there and moved it around and I could, it felt like things were in there were biting me and it turns out there's a term called galling where he had apparently used a uh, either a drive center or the or the uh, uh, Jacobs chuck uh, I can't remember which one and and had damage on it so when he put it in it didn't see properly it did rattle around and it did severe damage on the inside of his his spindle. Now on the inside of the spindle if it's in one small spot you might be able to use a small file uh, being careful not to damage the adjacent areas you might want to use a round uh, file and then you might take a, uh, a Morse, Morse taper that you've, you've turned put some very fine sandpaper on it and, and deal with that uh, if it's only minor damage, and this might occur if you buy a used lathe or if you got a friend that's damaged lathe, I'm sure all of y'all are going to be much more careful and that's not going to happen to you. Right? <laughs> Machinists use what, it call, uh, what are called reamers to, uh, in some instances, to cut a Morse taper like, like this. They'll drill a hole first and then they have this precisely machined uh, taper this is a coarse taper. It's a number two Morse taper. I bought these as a set uh, from eBay for about $14. They're supposedly high-speed steel. Um, and if I had minor damage, I would look to using this reamer with the straight, smooth edges. Uh, in this case, this is where you would use some type of uh, cutting oil or lubricant in there uh, to to do that and then you're going to turn this very precisely on on center let me show you how you do that the key to, to using this is to turn it absolutely on center by using a, a tap and die type of handle like this which is too small uh, so if that doesn't work here's an alternative you could actually fabricate you uh, one such as this where you cut a square hole uh, exactly to fit your uh, Morse, Morse taper and then you use both hands to turn it evenly on center very similar to if you're using a beel tap uh, to cut wooden uh, threaded wooden wooden blocks uh, the other alternative is you could use a pair of wrenches opposing wrenches like this where you could then use both hands to apply uh, equal pressure on the center uh, to turn turn this, um, you'd probably have to secure your spindle lock. Uh, use your spindle lock to hold the spindle down. And if the damage is too severe, you may either number one have to buy a new spindle, 
or or quill for your tailstock or it's possible you may be able to take it off and take it to a machinist who could uh, uh, do the do the appropriate repair for you. I want to stress when you're using uh, using a reamer you're not trying to fully restore it a shiny internal surface you're just getting after the high getting the high spots off uh, again use cutting oil liberally on the reamer when you use it and if you don't have cutting oil use some other type of oil or wax a dull reamer is the same as no reamer use a tap wrench or two wrenches turn as I talked about uh, uh, one other important thing you always turn in the forward direction and never never reverse always go in the same direction and then ex uh, pull it out to extract it if you missed last week's uh, if you missed the earlier video on cleaning the tip on cleaning the your morse taper you can click on it to watch it watch it here I'm not a machinist so any I welcome any comments that you might have if you got more expertise in this area than than I do put it in the comments uh, comments below if you're in a position where you can share this video with somebody that uh, it, it might help out, please share. Y'all stay safe. Come on back here.